Scripture reading is Romans 8, 26 to 39. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good, for those who would love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. God's love in Christ Jesus. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. It is Jesus Christ who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Welcome to worship. Two years ago, Linda and I moved to British Columbia. We met individuals who graciously welcomed us here even before we said I do to this wonderful place. July, 18, 2000, July 2018 was even more poignant in the sense that our call was not just about individuals. 
but was to a community, the community of faith known as St. Andrews. It is that broader view that we are invited to see as we look deeply into Paul's words to the church at Rome that he wrote to before he ever met them in person. Romans was the only church already established before Paul's visits. It is important that we remember that Paul's letter was written to provide direction to a congregation as they developed their theology, their worship, and their community life together. Biblical scholar N.T. Wright has said, anyone who claims to understand Romans fully is by definition mistaken. We tend to view Romans in general and chapter 8 specifically through the lens of individualism. We often look at the world through an individual perspective. A modern example is the current debate to mask or not to mask. Rather than a matter of safety for all, mask wearing has become a crusade about individual rights. In Paul's time, people tended to have a more collective rather than an individualistic view. Rather than spending a lot of time looking within, they tended to look outward. That doesn't mean that Paul was unconcerned about a personal relationship with God. However, Paul saw this relationship as something larger, a part of God's purpose in setting the world right. Our perspective makes a significant difference in how we understand Paul's words. Paul intended his letter to the church as an assurance that whatever they faced as a congregation was not about to upend them. Together with the prayers of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's groans too deep for words, they could face whatever hardship, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword together, not as individuals, but as a community. There's nothing more powerful than when the church comes together in prayer and brings our collective woes to God. But there are times that we do not know how to pray. The words do not come easily. Our individual struggles are so great or so contentious that we're almost too embarrassed to pray. A congregation with whom I worked a few years ago was in turmoil over decreasing finances, differences in worship styles, and at least half the congregation felt that the minister had lost her mandate to lead. There were many angry and accusatory words spoken rather than prayers. I remember their most senior elder, who rarely said much, reminded them, we cannot pray. The words will not come, but the Holy Spirit is praying for us as a church, not with words, but with holy groans of lament. His wisdom from Romans moved their attention from their limitations to focus on the hope and courage at their disposal surrounded by the prayers of the Holy Spirit. We're reminded in Paul's letter 
that in whatever we are facing, God is for us, all of us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. God is with us at every step. And Jesus has faced everything that we face. Many misinterpret the most quoted verse 28 to say, All things work together for good for everyone who loves God. We know in reality that all things do not work out for good. Paul has provided a list of devastating situations that are in no way good, and to pretend they are is unhelpful. The most accurate scripture translations say it this way, In all things, God is working for the goal of good for all who love him and are called by God. This puts a different emphasis upon neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our work as a congregation is reframed when we view God working for the goal of good in all things. When our efforts seem pointless, when we're out of ideas, resources, and seemingly out of time, God's work within us becomes the key. It isn't about us and how wonderful you may think we are or are not. Rather, it is about embracing a new God working for the goal of good with us collectively. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Stands forth by your blessing, our true faith confessing. Your people, Lord God, from your table take leave. The supper is ended, or oh, now be extended. The fruits of your service in all who believe. The seed of your teaching, a hungry source reaching shall blossom in action for all humankind. Your grace shall incite us, your love shall unite us to work for your kingdom, your purpose to find. With praise and thanksgiving to God ever living, the task of our everyday life we will face. Our faith ever sharing, in love ever caring, embracing as neighbours all those of each race. One feast that has fed us, one light that has led us, unite us as one in your life that we share. Then may all the living, with praise and thanksgiving, give honour to Christ and his name that we bear. And now may this ending be our beginning. Let us begin again and again to wonder and to cherish and to act so that at day's end we will be content knowing that we have given all our lives. And may God's love sustain us, comfort us, and uphold us this day 
and every day. Amen.